It is so scary to trust that when you act from a place of integrity that you will be okay and that you might not get what you want. Here it is. This is the lead up to last week's episode. And if you didn't listen to last week's, I think that's okay. I think you could just start here and then go back. It's like one of those weird Star Wars things. This conversation is about needs and getting them met. And what happens when you're in a relationship with somebody who sort of meets your needs? There are some needs that are just fundamental. And if those needs don't match up, then we sort of need to leave. But it can be really hard to make that decision when the relationship that you're in is so close to the one that you want to be in. How do we balance letting go and leaving space for a relationship to naturally develop and making our needs a priority and not compromising them for something that is not quite right? Like pretty close, but actually pretty far. So that's what we're talking about today. Needs, getting them met, asking for them to be met. And what happens when someone says, no, I'm sorry, I can't meet your needs. My name is Sean Galamas, and this is The Love Drive. So <laughs> are we starting? <laughs> how, okay. how can I help you? Coming off like a year and a half of being single. Um, I'm not someone who likes to date casually. So it's been hard to be on the sites and feel vulnerable and go out. And whether that's just a night of hooking up or something more, um, it scares me. <laughs> I definitely look towards being in a relationship. And that's what I'm struggling with right now with my current situation. Uh huh. So met the guy off of Bumble. Uh, we get along really, really well. But he is not looking for a relationship, but wants to continue the casualness of it. He basically wants his cake and eat it too, which he said. It's just he knows that he can't give me probably what I would look for in what a casual relationship would be. Right. Uh, he just can't tell me long term if it would be a thing. Okay. So because I'm having fun and I like him, I'm kind of putting my own needs to the side to continue on being casual, which I'm not used to doing. Right. Just to see if it's something that like I can do. But I'm still not getting the, I guess friendship even out of it of like he doesn't reach out i'm usually the one to reach out or make the plans and so we've had a couple talks about it um but i think in my gut tells me you're not going to get fulfillment out of this at all it's hard to have that conversation even though we've had like two very adult conversations about where we are at i kind of just need like a push <laughs> and like someone else's insight is that my job? I think that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why I'm here? <laughs> so what seems to be the problem? It, it sounds like you want something that this person can't give you. Yep. And that your gut is saying you're not really getting what you want. I think it's I hold on to like compatibility with someone or if I'm feeling a vibe, I want that person in my life. And there's something about this person that I kind of want to hold on to in a way. Um, but because our physical attraction and intimacy is so powerful that I don't think I could be able to be his friend and not like be the him like with him physically. Right. Yeah. So it's just, I think it's in my head too of like, where are you at in your life of, I know I'm available for a relationship, but should I 
in my head, I'm like, well, let's just see what happens. And he's like, well, this is what happens of like, again, in two months from now, I still am going to tell you I'm not ready for a relationship and then you're going to blame it all on me, which valid. Totally. Um, Sounds very insightful. Yeah. And he's been very upfront and I, I respect him a lot for having those conversations as a man. I feel like I don't get a lot of communication that way. So he's been really great about it. But yeah, I also am the type of person where I hate hurting people's feelings. <laughs> and I think about them sometimes too. And it's very, I hate doing that. <laughs> You're going to have to get over that one. I know. <laughs> like, take care of yourself, Holly. I, I think he's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's the, it's the uh, put the oxygen mask over oh. yourself before somebody else. That is, yeah. And this sounds like one of those situations where you need to take care of yourself and, yeah. and not care take somebody else who's being very clear about what they're available for. Totally. Which is not what you are looking for. But it totally sucks because it sounds like there's like a really great there is chemistry and mm -hmm. connection. And there's seems to be a level of intimacy that you haven't experienced in a while. Yeah. And it sounds like you've been single for a little bit and you're looking for a relationship and this fits some of those totally needs and desires, but not quite all of them. Right. A hundred percent. And yeah. my therapist would say, this isn't really in line with what you are really wanting. Mm -hmm. And so I, the question is, can you stay open to meeting other people while you spend time with this person? Mm -hmm. Or is the energy that you're devoting to this particular relationship sort of robbing you of really being available for other people? And that's a right. really hard question to answer. Yeah. And I think I've thought about that as well as when I date, I date one person and, and get to know one person. And it's hard because you can't put that on the other person so soon to be um, exclusive. He has are monogamous in that way where I've asked him if at any point you felt like you wanted to pursue someone else in that way. And you had a choice before like moving forward with it to talk to me first, just coming from a health standpoint, but also my feelings standpoint yeah, respect. Um, and respect. So I don't think I wouldn't be open to like dating other people and wouldn't want him doing the same. So that's where it's like, it is cut and dry, but I'm, I want to learn how to be friends as well. With the opposite sex that when you feel that chemistry, but I, by your expression, I feel like it's just sometimes you can't. <laughs> I don't, I think you can. Yeah. I don't know. How long have you been seeing each other? About three months. Okay. I've never really seen somebody for three months and then successfully transitioned mm -hmm. to friendship, mm -hmm. but I have seen people for six to nine months mm -hmm. and successfully transitioned to friendship, but that often took like a three to six months period of no contact right. just to let all the feelings mm. settle sure. and for other stuff to move in, right. you know, right. uh, for you to realize that maybe this isn't a, a great fit after all. And right. you sort of, sort of see them, you start seeing them as a friend and not as a potential life partner. Right. Right. So I have a few friends or that are friends now that were exes mm -hmm. that and we have a really lovely relationship and mm -hmm. I don't want to sleep with them. And right. Right. Sometimes we flirt. Yeah. And that's great. Right. And it's very loving and intimate because we've had that and we were able to sort of transition. Right. But we've also had partners since. Mm -hmm. So right. uh, I yeah. don't know. I've no, I don't really have a lot of experience with transitioning right away. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's not to say it's not possible. Totally. Yeah. I definitely think in the last week or so, I've, I know in my head what needs to happen and We've had great conversations about this, so I feel like I owe it for us to get together and talk about it in person, or if at this point we kind of know where it was or wasn't going, and if it's just kind of a text message that I, that should be had of like, you know, best wishes sort mm. of thing. I think, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm still kind of toggling between that. I feel like three months, you could have a coffee or something. I think you know? so. I think it doesn't need to be like, let's go out dinner wise. It's more of like, hey, let's meet up. Yeah. Or, hey, I have something on my mind. I'd like to run it by you. Yeah. Can we get together? Yeah, totally. I mean, that sends sort of a message that there's conversation that needs to happen. Yep. 
but it's a little ambiguous as to which way it's going. Yep. <laughs> but also three months, I think it's a worthwhile conversation to have. Ah, the episode is not quite over yet because I wanted to get in touch with Holly to see what had changed in the last year since we spoke. Had she been able to ask for her needs? Had she been able to believe her partner when he said that he's not available for a relationship? What has happened in this last year? This is that update. Did you listen to last week's episode? I did. <laughs> How did it feel? It actually felt good just to, you know, kind of like I said in the episode, you know, you look for advice sometimes from others, but advice is just basically what you already know, what you need to do. And hearing it out loud again, you know, how many months later, it was just really awesome to see kind of the growth and like openness I've had to communicate with, you know, other people like in my love life uh, since then. So I definitely took away a lot from that and have been able to use that in my current situation. Sorry, what is your current situation? Uh, so current situation is I'm currently with someone and we are living together. <laughs> so I met someone in early December dating site and it was really rocky for the first couple months. But I think it actually, not rocky. It was, um, so there's some culture to it. He's he's Latin and he had just moved here a year ago. So there was some language barrier stuff and how to interpret our feelings and communicating to each other. But I was able to just be super open and not kind of, you know, hide or feel like I couldn't communicate my feelings right off the bat. And any sort of kind of like in the last episode, the red flag thing, it was just like right away, I was like, nope, I don't like this. You know, how can we get through it? He was very willing to answer any questions I had. And there was a time where it was kind of just too fast, too soon. So we took a little bit of a break from each other, but then kind of found us back of just like the connection is real. The partnership is real. Let's work on this which honestly to me was just a boost of confidence that I've never had a man come back. And like we were saying, pursuing me um, and like meeting me halfway rather than like 90, 10. So yeah, we've, we've worked on ourselves um, and he ended up moving in see two months ago and yeah, we're cohabitating <laughs> and working through what that feels like as well. Is this a different person than the Bumble guy? It is. It is a different person. What happened with Bumble guy? Bumble guy was exactly what we were kind of discussing of. I had to go in and say, look, I don't feel the connection going both ways. Maybe it's just kind of easier for me to say, like, let's just go our separate ways. Better off as friends if we run into each other or you know, you're out, you know, feel free to text me, but I wasn't getting what I needed. And then he, of course, came clean and was like, yeah, I'm just not ready for a relationship. You're a great person. <laughs> uh, gave me the spiel I've heard a lot of times. <laughs> but I had the courage after that just to know what I needed to do to be like, no more time wasted. Let's move on. It also sounds like he was pretty clear about not being ready for a relationship. Yep. Yeah. And I just kept going, no, you are. <laughs> Trust me, you, you're you going to change your mind because I'm pretty amazing. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that was... I gave it a few months, totally got off of um, dating sites. And then one just chill afternoon with a girlfriend, she's like, oh, just hop on for fun. So I hopped back on another dating site. And this um, current person, he was the first person I connected with and messaged. Uh, we met maybe like a week later. And then literally inseparable since that day. So that's kind of, yeah, where I'm at. But 
it's, it hasn't been easy because I've been putting myself in vulnerable places to open up a little bit more, but it's truly, it's been beneficial. How is this person showing up in ways that other people haven't? When he wasn't living with me, you know, I would hear from him first. There would be phone calls rather than just text messages. You know, he would make the plans. He just met me in ways that others didn't. I felt appreciated and I felt wanted, which I hadn't felt in a really long time from another person. There were some ups and downs where I definitely felt like he wasn't ready for a relationship, just being new to not only San Francisco, but to the country. And so, you know, we kind of worked through that, but, you know, I was able to say like, I'm here and want a relationship. And that's kind of where we fell off a little bit after the first of the year where um, he just wasn't looking for that at the time. But then we kind of came back together. You wanted a relationship. He didn't want one, which kind of sounds like the pattern that was sort of repeating itself with the other person. Mm-hmm. And yeah. You, but you dealt with it differently? Yeah. I felt like I, I gave... I was able to give the space rather than like, you know, feeding a dead horse, right? Like in the past relationships, it was like I would hear them communicate like, hey, I'm not really looking for a relationship. And I would say, oh, yeah, no worries. Like, let's take it super casual. And then I would find myself up just being like in the same situation where this one, it was tough and it hurt. But I gave him the space that he needed and said, okay, like, if that's not what you want, I can't show up any other way for you. Uh, There was some time that passed that we didn't, you know, communicate. And then we were able to kind of come back together and just kind of find middle ground. Yeah, I think the different way that I approached it was from the get go. It's this is not what I'm looking for. Like, great. Okay. Okay. I'm looking for it. So we have to go our separate ways. There's a lot of power in admitting to yourself that the situation that you're in is not the right situation. Mm -hmm. And you are sort of, you're living in a more integrous way. Mm -hmm. Right? You're living in, sorry, I could say that easier. You're living in integrity. (laughs) I (laughs) guess. And... uh, People take you more seriously. Mm -hmm. You don't compromise something that is intensely important to you. Mm -hmm. And also it allows you to position yourself much better for Mm -hmm. someone who's a better fit. Right. And also it's really hard to give somebody space and freedom when their desires aren't really lined up with ours, but they're kind of close. Right. Yeah. Being able to just take a step back. And like you said, just be honest with yourself of as much as this is going to hurt, he might walk away forever, a month, a week, two days, but you got to definitely be honest with yourself in order to move forward. So I felt like I did that. It is so scary to trust that when you act from a place of integrity that you will be okay and that and that you might not get what you want right and that's okay right scary but okay mhm you know i had a lot of friends that supported me and kind of once him and i started communicating again it was just all those thoughts of Oh, you know, like, what are my friends going to think? I just cried to them over this guy. (laughs) And now we're talking again and trying to figure it out. And so I think that also comes back to just being honest with yourself. This is your life, your heart, your emotions, and you need to do what you feel is going to be best for you. Um, And it kind of goes along the lines of like the advice thing, right? Of you look to your friends and family for support and advice, but ultimately you're going to do what you want to do. But it's kind of that thought in the back of your head of, 
is this going to be best for you? Like, how are you going to feel after you make this decision? But sometimes you can't, you don't know. You just don't know. You don't know and you want the thing. You want the relationship. You want the person. Even if that person doesn't really line up with what it is that that might serve you. Mm-hmm. It's hard. It's hard to really figure out what is in highest service of ourselves. Mm-hmm. Sometimes what I want is definitely not what I need. True. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think I'm still figuring it out now with just us living together. You know, what is it that I need? You know, is he just this placeholder? I mean, I've, we've definitely fallen for each other a lot deeper. We even say, you know, the L word, we say, I love you to each other, (laughs) but we're, we're seeing what that is on like what level and what that love like means to us, you know? Do you say it in Spanish? I do. <laughs> I do. Te quiero mucho. Uh, I say te amo. Te yeah. amo. Mucho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's definitely, I feel so comfortable in asking him whatever it may be. Um, and he's always very honest with me. And he's been a very honest man from the beginning, but it's intimidating, especially for someone for me where I'm like, Oh no, I'm not thinking about anything. Even though I have a thousand thoughts in my head, (laughs) Um, it's like better left unsaid than trying to get into a conversation about something that's, you know, very uh, awkward for me. What's awkward for you? Uh, Just, you know, working through feelings of, I think it's more of the trust again for me of you left once, right? So what in your world shifted that now you want to, be here and be with me. We've now moved in together, but there's still this, you know, uh, just, yeah, it's just trusting that it's going in a direction still that it, that it is a relationship, um, that there is a future rather than, you know, I might come home from work one day and he'll, his things are gone. (laughs) That's always a possibility, by the way. Yes. (laughs) I know. <laughs> no, no matter what, no matter if you have kids or a mortgage together or an apartment in San Francisco, which is almost as committing <laughs> as having children. That is true. I guess, yeah, I always base it off of, yeah, it's anything can happen, right? And he actually has said that. He's like, I don't know what tomorrow brings. I don't know what five minutes brings. I always put it on the other person that they're going to fuck up where it's like, what if today I walk out and grab coffee and I meet someone where I'm just like, holy shit, I was supposed to meet you today and it could be me. So I think that's something too, where I'm just always like putting it on the other person that you're going to do this to me. You're going to do this to me. And I think that's a lot of pressure for some on someone. We all get to live in the present and we have no idea what's going to happen. Hey, lovebirds, thank you so much for spending this time with me today. Your continued support means a lot to me. And as a thank you, I would like to offer some free love advice to you. So if you have a situation that you would like some support in, 30 minutes of it, contact me, sean at thelovedrive.com. I can't help everybody, but send me an email with what it is that you are struggling with. And I will see if that is a good fit for one of these free love advice episodes. Thank you so much and have a beautiful week.